Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Um, today is obviously the last part of my 2023 houseplant tour, which I'm super excited to finally get out. Um, I just feel like it's been a long time coming. So if you have not watched the first two parts, you can watch these two videos here. Um, part one was my Hoyas, part two were all the plants in my plant room, and now part three is going to be my living room plants plants in the kitchen and then my bedroom plants so I rarely film <laughs> why can't I say this I rarely film in here because I I don't know I try and keep some things off the internet um, I do share a lot of my life obviously I I don't know I feel like I don't really hold back much these days but there are certain parts of my life that I like to keep private there are certain areas of my home that I like to keep private um, one of them is my bedroom and that's just because my husband and I spent a decent amount of time in here as well as Pudge and it's just kind of our little area where we don't have to worry not that we're really worried about it but we don't really treat it the way we treat the rest of the apartment where we try and keep everything really nice and tidy out there this is kind of where we let loose um so yeah i try to not film in here but if you follow my blog channel you'll know that i have been doing a complete bedroom refresh i installed this new plant shelf which i will obviously be showing you today i got a new media cabinet um got a new bed frame so you can watch all of that on my vlog channel but the one thing that was missing, and it's like no matter how many things I refresh, I feel like something wasn't quite right, and that was new sheets. So I am super excited that today um, I am going to show you the new sheets that I got. Today's video is sponsored by Brooklinen. If you haven't heard of Brooklinen, Brooklinen is a luxury sheets company that was founded on the philosophy that people deserve simple but beautiful home essentials at a fair price. So I actually used to travel quite a bit for work before I became a YouTuber, obviously. Um, and my boss used to put me up at these really, really fancy hotels that like I never in my wildest dreams would have ever booked on my own. Among all the amenities and kind of things that are at these fancy hotels, honestly, the one thing that I miss the most was just like being a hermit in the hotel room after work was done and just like sinking into the bed and enjoying those magical sheets because they were so luxurious um and now i can enjoy that at home which i'm just so excited about i feel like i'm just gonna be in bed all the time now so i just want to show you what i got so i got um the luxe duvet cover in cream as well as the core linen sheet the Lux core linen sheet in cream and it comes with one flat sheet, one fitted sheet, and two pillowcases. And this color is everything. This color is beautiful. I am so excited about it. Look at that. Oh, got these two pieces as well as these Lux pillowcases in the color Solid Toffee and it's so beautiful like look at this color in contrast with our media cabinet and my shelf it's perfect it's so perfect the Lux Satin sheets are 480 thread count with a slightly luminous finish and is more tightly woven and heavier which makes it super warm and soft while still providing comfort year-round everything I just showed you is included in the Lux hardcore bundle which saves you 25% off automatically versus buying each of the individual items the best part is you can shop from the comfort of your own home and mix and match over 20 colors and patterns to match your style. The sheets do get softer with every wash, so what I'm actually going to do is just give them a little spritz and then I'm going to throw them in the dryer and I'm going to tumble dry them or de-wrinkle them and then we are going to get it on the bed. We actually use our flat sheet a bit differently in this house because we have a pug with large eyeballs so we use the flat sheet to cover the duvet so that I can just easily wash this. We do, we do what works for us. Do you like it? 
Is it Pudge approved? <laughs> <laughs> I think um, it's got the Pudge stamp of approval. Brooklyn Inn is having one of their biggest sales right now to celebrate their birthday through May 8th. So if you want to stock up on bedding to bath essentials for 2023, now is the perfect time to take advantage of their sale where you can get 25% off products using the link in my description. Thank you again to Brooklyn Inn for sponsoring today's houseplant tour. We are now in one of my new favorite corners of the house and it's where I keep pretty much all of our bedroom plants. So I just kind of want to show you where everything is placed right now. Obviously you can see my my big uh, Monstera Deliciosa is up on the very top and it is getting really close to the ceiling. So we're gonna have to move her again. Um, on the shelf below is my Philodendron Mykins, my, um, my second one that I got from Plant Some CA. And then we have a fern leaf cactus here, which has actually been growing really well. I thought it was gonna need more light, but it's pushed out this growth point, this one, and is working on another one inside of there. It's kind of hard to see. Moving one below, we have my Schifflera. It's a Schifflera cutting from my bigger plant. I have a little terrarium that I'll show you in depth in a bit. My ficus alii is right here, right next to my Hoya waiedii. And then on the very bottom, I have my Lepismium cruciform, which again is another plant that I thought would die, but is doing pretty decent um, besides this one little part here. And then quickly in the windowsill, I keep my Aglaonema. Um, I got this one for Christmas from my aunt and yeah just kind of lives in the windowsill there as i've mentioned in other videos this is my big south facing window it's one of the warmest windows in the house so we keep this closed for the most part just for privacy reasons and i just wanted to show you a couple light readings for a sunny day like today with the shades closed if you have not seen this before this is the house plant journal lth meter it captures light temperature and humidity and if you want to learn more about this meter and like how to read light you can watch this video um, I did an in-depth sort of review and first impressions of the LTH meter I kind of showed you readings around the apartment and yeah you can get everything in that video so anyway with the window closed let's say for this Mikeins and I am standing to the side of it I'm not you you can see in the uh what is this called the convex mirror that i am not blocking i'm not blocking the light i'm standing off to the side just to show you the reading so with the window closed on a sunny day it is hovering sort of around the 200 light can foot candle reading going down here a little lower 161 ficus alii 117, 118. So with the window closed, it's not getting a ton of light, but still a decent amount of light. And then obviously on a cloudier day, it's not gonna be nearly this high. We're starting off nice and easy with this snake plant that I did feature in one of my repot and chat videos, or it could have been like a, I don't know, it, it was, I'll link it in the description, but I do remember repotting this on camera and someone was actually <laughs> roasting me saying like you don't follow your own advice because your snake plant looks thirsty or whatever she looks fine to me she's definitely getting taller like this this one right here is getting up there and she's kind of wobbling a bit I do think I might need to get it into something taller so that it has a little bit more support but I really liked the growth pattern of it the new leaves that have come in are definitely a little bit more I don't know, it's giving a little bit more than the older leaves and then the newest leaf on it is like really big. By the way, you might be able to hear my husband on the other side of the wall, he's in a meeting, but anywho, we're just trying to work under the same roof. Um, so this one is in no drainage. I repotted this on camera. Um, it's in a chunky soil mix. It's got a lot of perlite in it, even though it doesn't really look like it. The reason that I put more perlite in this and wanted to make it a bit chunkier than I would um, normally is because I knew that I was going to put it somewhere dark. 
at the time it was living I think it was I think I had moved it to my hallway and I literally get like 10 foot candles of light in the hallway so I didn't want water to be sitting in the substrate for a very long time so opted for a chunkier mix and yeah roots are looking really good um, no problems at all during the transition but I am gonna have to do something about this soon I'm not going to bring down my Monstera just because it is so large it's really heavy I don't want to hurt myself and I did show a bit of that oh gosh when's the last time I would have shown that video I'm not sure but I will like I'll just plug in a photo of it here really quickly for you to enjoy um, just a quick backstory I got this one as this plant specifically I think was a two leaf plant and I grew the rest of the leaves in my care um, I did feel like this was a different form of Monstera if you look at the older leaves it kind of looks like it could be a Brazilian form although I'm not really sure about like the newest leaves that come in yet so right now I'm just calling it a Monstera deliciosa it's still very beautiful it's a super 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 slow grower so slow the leaves are really really thick and plasticky like honestly it's probably about as thick as this plant if not thicker and it's just a beautiful it's a beautiful specimen so I'm very happy to have it it's been pretty easy for me um, the propagations that I took from it however have not been very easy so I've been super super careful with watering with that plant and ensuring that it's getting enough light because I do not want to deal with any root rot situation I don't want to have to rehab it because to be fully honest, if that plant rotted, I would not have a lot of faith in my ability to rehab a plant that large. Just an FYI, the um, offsets that came from that plant is what started the parfait method for me where I use different substrates to rehab a really finicky plant. Um, and I've actually recently gotten some parfait questions in the last few weeks, so I think I will um, answer those questions in an upcoming Q&A. But anywho, that's the Monstera. It is currently living up there. It is starting to take off now, so I'm not sure how much longer it'll be able to live there. But in the meantime, we're just enjoying her in the bedroom. And I've really, really loved the look of having a big giant Monstera on a top shelf. I feel like a good amount of people don't really think about putting a really large plant like that higher up. They just kind of leave it on the ground or like put it in a corner somewhere. But I feel like putting a big Monstera of that size on a top shelf really just makes it look more wild and that is like my aesthetic I guess for plants is just that wild indoor jungle look but still keeping a very very like tidy space and keeping things a little bit more minimalistic in other areas but anyway um, I digress so now we are on to the next one this is a fern leaf cactus I acquired this one from a friend over Christmas, so I've had it for a few months now. She gave it to me with these big boys and I think this big boy here. Uh, and then this one grew in my care, this one grew in my care, and then I was trying to show you earlier, but there's a little baby right here growing. So I have owned one of these before but all of the new growth that came from it looked kind of like this but worse like they were only developing like this much of like the leafy part of it and so it just kind of looked like a stick that was shooting out of it and i think the problem was that i wasn't giving it enough light and honestly truly i probably could give this more light and i have sort of an idea of what I want to do. I just don't want to say anything yet because I don't want to spoil it, but I am a lot happier with the growth of this one than I was my last one. So thankfully, you know, the second time around has been a lot better of an experience than the first time around because I actually really, really love this plant and I think it's just such a cool, funky little piece that, you know, would look great on a shelf that's styled like this or even just on its own. And I don't know, it's just so fun and I feel like not enough people give this um, like the appreciation that it deserves, but it's really, it's, it's a fun one. Um, I do have this one also in no drainage. There's Lekka down at the bottom and then Party Pond up at the top. Roots look really, really good. Um, the Fern Leaf Cactus does have a super delicate root system. All of the 
roots are very very hairline and thin so repots can be kind of challenging a little bit tricky but um, my suggestion would be to put it in a larger vessel size than you would normally so let's say that like the root system that this had before probably could have fit in like honestly a four inch pot but i've opted for a pot this big because i i want to keep it in the same pot for as long as possible um, you just have to make sure that you watch your watering make sure that you're giving it adequate light so that your you know your roots aren't just sitting in a pool of water but anyway yeah, this one, I guess, all that to say is doing really well. And I'm super, super happy with this acquisition. Living right next to the Fernleaf Cactus is one of my other micans that I have in this house. Um, this is the one that I got from Plantsum CA. Uh, just to quickly go into its backstory, this one came in looking really, really lush and beautiful. It was a really, it was a much smaller plant than this, but um, it, it was a decent sized plant. I shortly went to California right after, came home, and this one was just attacked so bad by spider mites. So I had to chop it back. I had to do like a really invasive treatment. I chopped so much of it off, and now she's kind of coming back in full force. I do tend to forget to chop this one as often as I chop my other one. Um, like the way it's looking now, I would chop this long guy. I just try and keep it like kind of like a blunt cut when I'm getting it to grow in thicker because then you can have auxiliary buds that all activate sort of in the same area and then you just keep filling and filling and filling if that makes sense. I do have a dedicated My Gins Care video where I talk about that if you want to watch it. As good as she looks now um, in comparison to a few months ago, um, I, I think that she could be happier, not gonna lie. She's still in the original pot that it came in from Plant Some. Um, in a really really what is that hydro hydrophobic in hydrophobic soil so this will be sort of next up on my list of repot um, plants but very happy with how far she's come next two plants below those um, the first one is my Schifflera this one is two cuttings from my main plant um, I was not supposed to keep another one. I just couldn't get myself to throw it away and I'm kind of glad that I didn't because this looks so cute in like a little vase like this and I think once both of them really get rooted you can see some roots starting to form now. I honestly think I'm just gonna grow it in water indefinitely. I don't think that I'm ever going to like pot this up because I already have two fully established chifleras in two separate rooms and so i just don't feel the need to like i don't know make this its own plant um i'm just gonna keep it in water for as long as possible but i do think it's such a cute little piece and i kind of move this around everywhere like it was living next to my bedside for one little stint of time then it was living where the snake plant is i put it on my dining table Put it on my coffee table. It's kind of like the little traveling Schifflera that just gets a new home every few weeks when I'm feeling like a refresh is in order. But yeah, this one's a fun one. Very, very happy to have added a Schifflera to my collection. Um, and then the next one is <laughs> this little moss um, terrarium that I have created. It's nothing special, okay, you guys. I'm not like a terrarium artist i do think it's a form of artistry so don't laugh at me um that's not me i i feel like i would love to be that kind of plant person but i just don't really have the patience for it it's it's an art form and it requires care and it requires maintenance and stuff and i just don't really have that in me right now but i can handle these little ones so I'm just going to kind of show you what I've done. I got this little vessel from my mother-in-law's house when we were cleaning it out. She just had like little clips in here. I took it home and I added a little piece of moss that I found on my sister-in-law's balcony. Um, and then I <laughs> picked some more moss from her grass. Um, and then I added the little ghost that I got from my sister. And in terms of the substrate, there is... A layer of um, what is that fluval stratum down at the bottom and then I have a soil mix that's heavily heavily um, amended with well not really amended but there's a lot of uh, biochar in it 
just to keep any like nasty bacteria away and then um, I added a little bit of like this decorative white sand on the top I sort of sprinkled it and yeah it sort of came together really nicely it gets all like foggy and stuff like that which I kind of like because the ghost is in there and it makes it look a little bit more I don't know spooky my goal is to just over the next few months start creating these little micro terrariums that i can kind of put here and there around the house um and hopefully one day i can build out like a much bigger terrarium but again just not really in the forefront of my mind right now but yeah this was my latest creation and i'm actually quite happy with it second to last shelf i have one of my favorites the ficus alii i truly truly in my heart of hearts thought i would have unalived this by now and it would have seen the light um many moons ago but here she is and just kind of proving time and time again that she is a fighter <laughs> not that she's really struggled a ton to be honest um i did have this in my tent for a while trying to acclimatize it i did have some of the bottom leaves falling off leaves coming in really warped but we've we've figured it out and she's Kind of turning into something really cute. I feel like this is one of the most underrated ficuses out there. It's just such a cool, it's such a cool leaf. Like, I don't know, it's, I don't know, it's so, it's just so much different than a lot of the ficus varieties that are out there and I will say that this is probably my favorite of all of them and I'm glad that in all my years of growing ficus and owning different ficus that this one has decided to cooperate and you know live live that's it just live um she has moved around quite a bit in the apartment i had her like again in the living room obviously have her here she was living in an exo for a while living in the kitchen and yeah I, i've kind of moved her around where i needed to and she's been such a trooper through all of it so yeah also living in no drainage there's no lecca down at the bottom it's just straight soil I don't know if you can tell but she is actually getting quite root bound down at the bottom luckily these roots really are they're deep divers so they really really reach for the bottom of the pot first they wrap around so I mean it's good because now it's only root bound down at the bottom and there's still a lot of area for roots to live up at the top um, so I won't need to repot this for a while, but again, very, very glad that this one decided to stay alive for me. Living next to the ficus alii is, honestly, it's a plant that I did not think I would love as much as I do. So I acquired this from Vandula Farms, I want to say two summers ago. Was it two summers ago? Yeah, I think I, think I got this in 2021. And it was already like a pretty full plant, but probably half of this. It came in a little four inch pot. Um, there were multiple stems out of it, but it was not this full. Like she is thick and lush and she grows so fast. She grows so well. Um, some of these new leaves, I've been using an or I've been using TPS orchid fertilizer on this plant specifically and like some of the leaves are coming in so huge like these are so much bigger than some of the leaves that came before it like they look like proper green beans and honestly i just love how like full it is like i like that this hoya tends to grow in a little bit more compact rather than pushing out just those crazy runners that hoyas tend to push out it's just been a really really like lovely addition to my collection and has honestly lived pretty happily no matter where I've put it. I thought that it would need more light here because I did have it in my Hoya cabinet for a while and it was growing pretty steadily in the Hoya cap or in the cabinet, but I feel like it's growing even faster now, which is a nice surprise. But let's just like take a second to admire her beauty. She's just so look at her oh yeah oh yeah um and keep in mind i do give this trimmings um regularly if like one stem grows at a much faster rate like i've just been trying to keep it again like a blunt cut to keep it looking really full and then again it like sort of activates little auxiliary buds here and there but oh 
I want to show you the substrate. I did repot this one recently because it's so, so thirsty. So I got it into no drainage in a really dense soil mix. There is Leka down at the bottom. But you can see all of these roots are looking really, really happy and healthy. And honestly, I wasn't expecting it to get established so soon. But hey, I'll take it. The last plant is this Lapismium cruciform. Um, I picked this one up in California over the holidays as well. I think it was the holidays. It came in a four inch pot, but so much of it was rotted and I was really sad. But they rooted pretty easily and now it's kind of like grown back with full, on max, on max strength. <laughs> um, one thing I really love about this plant is just like how cute and fuzzy these little white bits are it just gives it so much character and i love the crazy growth pattern of it look at it it has no rules no boundaries it just does what it wants pushes out growth from wherever it wants and i'm here for it i just think that it's a really really fun piece to have on a shelf and does not require as much light as i thought it would i mean i'm sure that a lot of this new growth would be coming in a lot larger and thicker if I had given it more light but I'm kind of I'm happy with it you know there are some plants that I buy like this one where I want to enjoy it on a shelf and even if it's not growing like at its fullest potential if it's alive and it's growing then then I'm happy but yeah this one is just really great because it's got like little fuzzies on it again like these these white little puff balls at every knuckle and it's just so so cool and my toilet is yelling at me the last plant in this room is one that i feel like many people would be surprised to see um i don't actually know the variety of aglonema this is but i did get this from my aunt over the holidays and she said that it would bring me um like wealth and fertility or something i can't remember but i will say that 2023 has been an amazing year you know, I've had some hiccups here and there, but if I compare it to the last even like five years of my life, like 2023 is just is just up there. So whether or not I owe it to this little plant, um, I'm not going to take any chances. So, yeah, she's she's been good to me so far. Not a ton of growth. Um, she is living in my south facing windowsill. As I showed you, this thing dries out so fast because it's so hot in that window. It did push out a flower and then we turned the heater on and it like kind of melted it but it's okay i don't really want this plant for the flowers i just I'm trying to grow more of these like pinky leaves on it i will say off the bat this is not ever a plant that i would buy myself um it's not i mean if you guys know me you know that this is not my style of plant but when I get plants that have like sentimental meaning and I get them from people who put thought into it and they thought of me, I just grow to love them and this is one of them. So yeah, now it's living in my bedroom, getting prime real estate in a windowsill and let's just hope that she keeps my year going smoothly. So that is it for all the plants in my bedroom. I try to not keep an excess of plants in my bedroom just because of fungus gnats um we already have enough fungus gnats flying around this house as it is and the last place that i want to have them is in our bedroom so this is the extent of the plants i don't ever plan on putting any more plants in here besides what can fit on that shelf this bedroom is prime real estate for plants and honestly if i lived in this apartment by myself like let's say vince wasn't in my life um this would be my plant room. It would just be all plants, as far as the eyes can see. But, you know, I am a good, I, I consider myself to be a good roommate and I try and create boundaries with my plants. And Vince, although he has never once complained about plants, it's just something that I'm very cognizant of. It's something that I'm very like, I take really seriously and it's important to me that like, while this house feel like feels like a home, I don't want the hobby to feel overwhelming. So yeah, that is it for the bedroom plants, and now we're going to move into the living room. Hi. Before I pull each out one by one, um, I'm just going to show you where things are placed really quickly. 
So starting in the hallway, I've got these two shelves that my dad put up for me that houses one of my Vitar Foliums and a Deshaya. On the other side of the wall, I have the two Ikea shelves that you kind of see in the background a lot when I'm filming out here. And it houses pretty much all trailing plants. To the left of it is my main plant shelf area. I've got my Ikea Billy bookcase, which is styled with like house things plus some plants. And then next to it is my Hickenbottom Metagory bookshelf from Wayfair. Opening up the shelf, um, you can see on the top I have pretty much all books, my coffee machine. Below here, I have two 10 watt light bars that are painted very, very horribly, but it does the job. And then have some Anthurium and non aeroids in here. Of course, I will show them to you in detail. I just want to show you where they are. And then on the main shelf, I have some of my like odd plants here and there. I've got some Anthurium up here, some trailing plants. It's mostly Anthurium on this shelf with the exception of some Ripsalis, but you can pretty much get an idea of who is here. Um, they've only been on this shelf for a few months. Um, a lot of them are still recovering from being in the plant room where it was way too hot. So a lot of them are regrowing now. Still kind of struggling a little bit with my Anthurium and you'll see later once I pull them all out. On the top of the Billy, bookcase is my um, Billy Etier. I actually didn't put that two, that those, I didn't put two and two together. I've got a philodendron Billy Etier on top of my Ikea Billy shelf. To the left of it is my um, Dracaena Marginata, which is in full rehab mode. You can see that I chopped off the top of them. It used to be really, really tall and lush, and then it succumbed to spider mites, but she's regrowing now. I notched it a while back and it's just kind of now starting to wake up. In the corner of my living room are my two philodendron El Guapos down here and then on the top I have my biggest Schifflera. Going to my south facing window, I only have one plant um, on this windowsill um, and that is my Ripsalis salicornioids. I know that this is kind of like the ideal place to house plants but when there's too many plants on this windowsill, I get a little bit overwhelmed. I feel like it looks cluttered and I just, I don't know, I, I like it to be empty and I know it's kind of like a missed opportunity, but <laughs> that's just, I just gotta listen to my gut. Now, moving to this big window, sorry for the backlit now, um, but in the corner next to my TV is this um, palm that is actually going to live out on my balcony once summer comes and things warm up a bit. That's where it was growing before. I just took it in for the winter, but it's like done pretty well out here. So happy about that. And then I've got my big Florida green in the corner. And just keep in mind for some of these larger plants, I'm not going to pull them out individually, but I'll give you guys a good look at it now. She's um, been growing pretty steadily without a pole. Some of these leaves are getting really big. This last one that just emerged, you can see, is like pretty small compared to the ones that came before. And this one was grown where the Dracaena is, and I just feel like it was not enough light over there. So I moved it here, and hopefully we get some growth on it again. I'm honestly, sorry, Vince is eating lunch, but um, I'm just gonna let it kind of grow all the way up here and see what happens, but yeah, she kind of blocks the TV a bit. I'm surprised my husband hasn't complained. But I kind of like her in this corner and I think that she's getting a lot better light. Moving into the kitchen, I've got my big Euphorbia that honestly could be getting more light. Oh my gosh, this lighting. Okay, this is the best I can do. It keeps getting backlit. But um, you can see how big it is. This thing has moved around so many times in my apartment. And I'm just sort of waiting until the time where we live in a house I'm hoping that I can hang on to it for long enough and keep it alive long enough because I do want to eventually give this an area with full sun. I'm just, I don't have a spot here, but it's been, it's been doing pretty well as it is. This thing is probably, I want to say like nine or maybe eight feet tall. Yeah, she's a, she's a big girl. 
Um, again, don't mind the mess in the kitchen, but this is where my philodendron Dean McDowell is living right now. There are two plants in this pot. She has so many spider mites that I had nowhere to like isolate her in the plant room. So I just put her in the kitchen and that way like every time I'm in here I can just wipe her down. I can just throw her in the sink. But um, it's funny that she's getting like prime real estate in front of a window for bad behavior. But she pushed out this new leaf for me out here and I don't know, I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of liking the idea of having a kitchen McDowell now. And then finally, the, the plants here kind of always change. I'm not 100% happy with this, but I just put it in here for now. Um, I just have a single elbow that is just in water um, living in the kitchen. I definitely will change this out probably right after this video, but this is where it's living for now. <sighs> We've got a really long, really long day ahead of us. We're gonna get through it. Gonna get through it. The first plant that I'm going to be showing you is my Ripsalis, Ripsalis salicornioids. Um, I showed this in a recent, oh gosh, actually, I think this video is gonna go up before the video. No, no. I think it was in my last week of plant to do. So my plant to do is from April. Um, you would have seen this guy get a little haircut. I took a few cuttings for a friend and yeah, she still, <laughs> she still looks really, really lush. I was having issues with a lot of these little thingies. I'll give you an up close peek at them. Um, a lot of these little things were falling off and I just had like a puddle of salicornioids down at the bottom. Um, I did have it in a larger pot with drainage holes. I recently repotted it into this big pot here. Obviously no drainage holes. You can see some roots are forming and it's been a lot better. It's still shedding a little bit, but definitely not as much as it was before. And I do think it's because it's retaining a lot more of that water. I just think that it has appreciated not drying out so often. Um, so I wish that I had moved it into no drainage a lot sooner. But, you know, it's a learning lesson. She's doing really, really well since the repot. Um, didn't go into shock or anything, even though I felt like I was kind of aggressive in that repot. I'm hoping that she flowers for me this year. I had someone ask me before whether this had, I think they asked if it was like the pink or the yellow flowers and um, I said that I had no clue uh, which flowers that it had because it had never flowered for me. But I gave my grandma some cuttings of this and hers flowered and I can confirm it is the yellow flowers. But now that my grandma's has flowered, I'm kind of hopeful that maybe this summer mine will. It's living. Lots of light. I can see some of these areas starting to sun stress. They're getting like really red. So we'll see. We will see what happens. This is another one you would have seen recently. Um, this is the Schefflera that I brought home not too long ago. I did give it a trim. I separated out like a whole other trunk that was attached to it um, and obviously took cuttings. I can't tell if you can I'm gonna shift my camera over a little bit. I feel like it's hard to see things against this backdrop, even though it's kind of far away. I feel like you can see things a little bit clearer when it's up against this area. I don't know if that makes sense. Anyway, this is the Schifflera. Um, It did have aphids when I first brought it home. I was not surprised because I have heard that this thing is a pest magnet. So far, I haven't had any other types of pests on it knock on wood. Some people have told me that there's just always had thrips or always had mealybugs or something. <laughs> so keeping my fingers crossed that this does not have anything else besides the aphids that I hope that I got all of them, which is why I kind of have it isolated in that corner in the meantime. I know that a lot of people grow this plant in really, really low light conditions. You'll see this plant being grown in offices as well with just like fluorescent lighting. So I felt like it would probably be fine in that corner. And yeah, I can see a lot of new growth coming in. The new leaves are so, so cute. I was not mentally prepared for how like precious and cute they were gonna be. Um, but yeah, this has been a really, really fun one. I do like this one more than the variegated version, although the variegated one is very nice. 
I brought out the next two together because they are a team, they are a unit. So obviously this is my Philodendron El Guapo. This is actually the, wait, this was the bottom cutting of this, I think. So this one used to be really, really big. I chopped it down because it got too crazy. And after the chop, it just was not happy with me. But I'm happy that the bottom woke up and um, it's actually really big for just like a stem cutting. This was like the first leaf to come out on it, which I was kind of confused about. This looks like it could be a top cutting, but I think it's because the stem was so thick, it was so girthy. It was like, like this, this thick. So yeah, I was able to get a little baby. I still have kept them together so that they don't feel like I've ripped them apart from each other. Um, you can see I've had a little bit of trouble in paradise with this one after the chop. But you know, she's coming back. She's got this new leaf on the way. Um, it looks like it's gonna have a little bit of bruising on it. Let me show you. Like on, well, on, I don't know if you could see it. There's a little bit of like cosmetic things happening on this leaf. And I just feel like it's kind of just adjusting to where it is now. It's not getting a ton of light down there. And that's because this plant really does not require a lot of light. This grew under there too. And she's like really happy. There's no bleaching, kind of under observation still, but happy it's just not dead. <laughs> so, okay, this is a variegated Heteraceum var oxycardium. Um, this is actually the bottom cutting of my plant. I do have the top cutting in prop in a prop bin that I am gonna be adding to, to this pot. And I gave a piece of it to a friend. But you can see the first leaf on this plant is actually pretty highly variegated, which I'm happy about because I had some leaves come out on it that didn't have a ton of variegation. And this one is like highly, highly variegated. And actually, even the new um, leaves that have come out of my props look just like this. Very, very light and highly variegated. So that's exciting. Um, it has kind of like gotten established here in this new pot, which is another reason why I haven't added the other props to it yet. I'm just a little bit hesitant to mess with anything in here, but I do want this to be fuller because it looks looks a little lonely right now, um, <laughs> but eventually I will add to this pot. The next plant is what I've been calling an Angomarcanum, although, or Angomarcanum af, although I really am not 100% sure on this ID. I, I believe that I imported this from Equigenera and then I gave it to my mom and then she was like, I hate this plant, take it back. And so now it's back with me. But again, I, I tried looking back on invoices and stuff and I the only thing that I can think of is that it's an Ingomarcanum. So maybe it is, maybe it's not, but it's, it's here. I will say that this is not the easiest plant to grow in low, lower humidity. I feel like this is a plant that would 100% enjoy being like in one of my exos. But if I am remembering correctly, when I did have this plant before and I was growing it in my exo, I had a lot of fungal spots on it. Like just really, really spotty. It just looked like a spotty mess. And now I just, I really don't have those kinds of issues anymore. I will say that like the majority of my issues with Anthurium at this point now is, uh, well, spider mites and pests. The, um, I don't know, like, I guess the warmth in my apartment, they don't really love that. And then just getting my pH right. And I'll show you some examples later of what I believe is too high of a pH. Anyway, it's kind of just always a single leaf whenever a new leaf comes out the last one just kind of likes to die or at least it, it loses its vibrance and just becomes like really really pale or just like yellow um i did repot this one recently but i don't I, honestly i don't really know if it's loving if it's loving this soil mix i'm a little bit tempted to move this to tree fern fiber or even pawn but yeah nothing Nothing crazy to report as of now, but she's alive, you know? I'm in my glass half full era and she's alive. What more can you ask for? The next one is my Deschidia pneumolaria. Am I getting that right? 
when I first got this plant, it was like probably this big. It just had a few of these little coins and it was just laying flat on the top. And I might, I might have a picture of it. If I can find it, um, I'll throw it up right here. But yeah, I've, it's grown definitely a lot longer. Like you can see if I unwrap this, oh, there are like 10 fungus gnats in here. That's disgusting. Do you see them flying around everywhere? So like you can see that it's definitely longer. It's trailing out now, but I didn't like how leggy it is because like a lot of these older leaves had died off. I'm like truly horrified that you guys just witnessed a family of fungus gnats emerge from this plant. Anyway, I've just wrapped it around because it just looks fuller, I guess, and I want some of these roots to root in here more. Um, oh my gosh, I got it. Protein. It's not much to look at right now. But um, she is growing. She's definitely growing a lot more now that I'm feeding. I've been feeding a lot of my Hoyas, my orchid fertilizer from TPS because I don't have enough orchids to justify keeping that bottle for as long as I'll have it. If I only use it on my orchids, I'm gonna have that fertilizer for all of eternity. So I have been using it on my Hoyas. I've been using it on my Deschidia and seems to like it because it's growing a lot and it's not really shedding those older leaves anymore but yeah still really love this one as much as I did when I first got it because it's just like the perfect little coin like plant look at it look at her and the leaves are so thick and juicy and meaty and delightful good work pal I'm not going to go into this one um, very much because I did show this one recently or feature this one recently. This one is my Myrtle Cactus Geometrizens Fakuro Curry Uzen Boku, aka the Booby Cactus. She doesn't grow. Period. She doesn't grow. This is it. But I mean, you know, I buy cactus, cacti, to enjoy them for what they are. I don't really buy them so that I can really enjoy robust growth, although some of them have it grown a lot um, in my care. But anyway, this is, I guess this was just one that I really would have liked to see some boobies develop. But we've gotten nothing. She hasn't, she hasn't given me a single, a single boob. So I think she's just gonna look like this forever. And then here we have a, um, come on Sherman. Syningia leucotrica. Uh, she has seen better days. You can see she's, I don't know, she she looks okay-ish, but she just like hasn't wanted to like uncurl her leaves in a while. Um, I let her completely dry out once and she hasn't really forgiven me since then. Um, these two leaves down here started to yellow really fast after it like dried out. But the good news is that we've got like a whole swarm of them down here that are slowly getting larger and larger every day, which is really exciting because if I could have like a little bush of them, that would be great. I just hope that these don't like abort in growth before they can get large enough to enjoy because it happened last time on my other Syningia leucotrica. But to be fair, this is like the largest that I've seen it. Hopefully we are getting somewhere, but um, yeah. This is her right now. I will say that she's not like the best looking thing and that's because she dries out so fast. And I honestly did, I repotted her not too long ago. I think I repotted this on camera and it's already outgrown this thing. So I think I'm just gonna move it to like, I think a wider pot would be kind of cool, but I don't know. And then I've got this succulent here, which I don't know. The name of um, I got this one from my friend Jing and it was really small it came in like a little two inch pot and she's just grown like crazy honestly I could probably like chop this off and like plant it back in because it's just kind of growing at a weird I don't know it's just growing a little weirdly but it's fun I'm not I'm not opposed really to the growth pattern I just think it would be a little cooler if it was filled in a bit more or if it was like a fuller pot rather than all just coming from one stem. But there are a lot of new little growth points coming out down at the base so hopefully we get something 
a little bushier lately, lately, <laughs> a little bushier later, but um, yeah, this is what she looks like for now. Here is my main Manjula pot. Um, these were some of the props that I had going. I was going to try and size up one of these and then I just decided to like have them trail. So they're just starting to get going now. They did start as like one leaf cuttings um, and yeah, I potted them together. I think there's like three stems in here. Um, and yeah, some of the new leaves on it are like looking really really cute and very very mandula ish because like a plant like like this doesn't really scream mandula to me so i'm glad that like it's starting to give me more leaves that i lo really love on the mandula i just can't wait till this thing is actually like trailing because we're in a period right now of like growing pains i always call this like the preteen phase um because i don't know it just looks <laughs> It looks a little funny, but uh, you just give her some time. I think by like midsummer to the end of summer, I should, if things keep going to plan, I should have something that at least comes like down to the bottom of this pot, hopefully. But this is what she looks like now. It's not bad, it's just, it's not wonderful. And then I'm just gonna show you these three at once because I don't know the IDs of them, honestly. I just kind of at one point started collecting like really silly goofy plants like this. I think this is some kind of Haworthia, if I'm not mistaken. This is another plant that lives out on my balcony during the summer. It's just in here for now, but it's actually grown a lot inside um, over the winter. Uh, these ones will stay inside. They just kind of live down there. I hope that one day I have like a proper area where I can keep my cacti and my succulents and, and just kind of really enjoy them. I would love to maybe have like a little ladder shelf on that windowsill and where they can just get blasted by the south facing window but um i'm renting here so i don't really want to do any crazy installation so that might have to be something that i manifest for when i own my own place but um yeah i'm going to show you these two at the same time i don't know who they are again lumped in with the time where i was buying a lot of non aeroids this one was super small when I got it. It was probably like this big. It was a little tiny thing. And now it's got like all these growth points coming out. I can see some things happening along this little belly area. Um, lots of new growth points coming from the center of it. So yeah, this one's really fun. I just try and keep rotating it. You can see that like it was growing this way and then I rotated it and now it's growing that way towards the light. Um, just cause I don't want it to like spill out one direction uh, and then I don't know what this is, but I think it's alive. It has no roots. It's like honestly never had any roots. I do see dog hair in it though. And then we have my silly goofy cactus. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. I think you can say that on YouTube. Anyway, don't know why it's growing like that. That doesn't look very penisy to me. It kind of just looks like this penis has an arm not sure what vibe it was going for. I'm not super into it. I actually thought about chopping off the top or chopping this piece off and then like planting it back in. Cause this, this, <laughs> this is something. Again, it's alive, it's alive. And then the last plant on that bottom shelf is this very strange, what I believe is a succulent. I knew the I knew the <laughs> the idea of it once. I'll throw it obviously I'll throw it up because I do think I have the idea of this saved somewhere. Um, but it's definitely it's grown a lot. This was actually just a I can't remember if this was no, this was not a propagation. I did chop this one. Um, I chopped it down quite a bit and I kept the top and it was not spilling out of here at all when I first got it into here. It was kind of just like sticking up like this and all of this has grown and i'm not i'm not sure what i'm doing with this i'm not quite understanding of like does it need a trellis does it need some kind of support because as it is it's just sort of i don't know i feel like it needs something right um but the new uh leaves on the top of it they're getting pretty big like you can see down here the leaves were quite small 
Oh, my cuticles are terrible. They're like proper size leaves. They look a little weird, like they have spider mites, but I don't think this plant has ever had spider mites. I think it kind of just grows like that. Or maybe it's like nutrient deficient. I have no idea what I'm doing with this plant. It just lives in my house. Second anthurium on that shelf. This one is an Amanda plant. Anytime that I say it's an Amanda plant, I'm referring to her, um, my friend Amanda, AKA Bunny. She has given me so many anthurium that I never in my wildest dreams thought I would have owned, um, including this one. So uh, this is the newest leaf to come out on it. I think we have quite a bit of size Quite a bit of a size jump between the last one and this one. I mean, not huge, but pretty significant, I'd say. She's a Rudy, a Rudy Rudy girl. Let me show you. I actually wanted to take a photo of this because look how beautiful it is. I did, I did not think that these roots were going to be this like pink lemonade color. It's so adorable. I yeah, I was very very surprised, but safe to say she took two. Her repot very well. I'm telling you, mycorrhizal inoculants. I, I inoculated this one with TPS billions, and the root growth with inoculated plants is wild. Anywho, I have seen much larger specimens of this on, of course, Amanda's page, and then um, Tyler also has, I'll link it in the description. I do have a small prop of this plant because Amanda sent us smaller ones before. Had a little bit of a hard time rooting, so she sent us larger ones as backups, which she totally didn't have to, but um, yeah. I'm glad that I have this one now because once my small one started declining, I was actually getting really worried, but this one is doing well and hopefully we can keep it that way. But yeah, she's actually living pretty happily on this shelf. Definitely a lot happier than when it was in the plant room. Next anthurium is this red crystal port. Am I wrong? This is probably one of my favorite anthuriums in my collection right now. Um, I kind of already knew when I first got this that it would be a plant that I would love so much just because it has red crystal in it, but I can't, I just can't get over like how beautiful this leaf is. Like it's so dark and the venation isn't like that super, super bright silvery venation that you'd see on like a mag or a crystal mag or a crystal um, or a best. Like it's, it's kind of more green and washed out and muted and it is a beauty. This is the oldest leaf on it. I think this is the leaf that it came with and it's been a pretty slow it's been a slow progression of growth but i feel like i'm finally like getting somewhere and i do think that the next leaf on this one should be hopefully bigger than this one not too much of an issue getting out of the catafil you can see we have a little ding in the corner here but i'll take it this is probably one of like the best looking anthurium in my collection right now because I'm learning that I'm not great with anthurium, but hopefully with practice, I will get better. <laughs> We've got some sad looking anthurium coming your way, but this one is the anthurium um, five, sorry, anthurium pap five self. Um, this one was viciously viciously attacked by spider mites and i don't think that you can see it really clearly on the um on camera but it's got like really really bad spider mic spider mite marks <laughs> you guys i can't talk today yeah it was like really really bad and i didn't even notice that it had spider mites because the leaf is so dark i didn't notice it for a while um, I thought that I had gotten to it in time, but sure enough that like the marks just showed up shortly after. But roots look good, which is good. <laughs> I feel like I just repotted this one recently, so I'm really happy to see some new roots because the root system wasn't great on it before. Um, I'm also seeing some roots forming up at the top. So this one is just in complete sort of like rehab mode. I'm not seeing the leaves that 
I know that this plant can produce and I'm just really on spider mite watch at this point in time and trying to just get a handle of things so I do think at some point in the summer time this one will glow up. Alice has one of these and hers is looking really good so I have faith that mine will get there. We now have a healthy root system, a good size stem um, so I've got a good base to work with but I do think that once this one gets going it will probably easily be one of my favorite anthurium in my collection. I always freaking forget what this is and of course I don't have a label on it because I'm so annoying but this is another Amanda plant. Nothing nothing much to look at from when you would have first seen this on one of our tortilla slapping videos or unboxing videos and yeah. The end. <laughs> Okay, this next one is one of my experiments for this year and um, I was going to do a dedicate and I will do a dedicated video on it but since we're here, I'm just going to show you. So um, I'm growing the Homolomina Humulus Red Velvet aquaponically and all was well um, in the beginning. Honestly, I, I just felt like all of the leaves were unfurling correctly. All of the leaves looked really nice and healthy but... I don't like the maintenance on this thing. I really don't. The water evaporates so quickly and it leaves just like this nasty, mucky stuff on the edges of the, the glass. So I have to like either like pour out all the water and like go in there and physically wipe down like the algae buildup and stuff. And there's also a lot of like algae growing inside like where the stem is like between the leaves between the sheath and it's just really really dirty and you can see on my disco ball there's some <laughs> algae forming too so I'm gonna tell you guys right now this is not an experiment that I think I will continue with I do think I'm going to grow this one outside of water but at least I know it's possible I think that this would be a great like aquarium plant especially if you have like a bubbler and you have a filter and it's like a whole like ecosystem in there but just in a little vessel like this it's it gets really gross so um i don't recommend doing this i just wanted to see if it was possible and it is which is great but i am ready to like not see, see this anymore because it's a little it's a little gross the next plant is my philodendron rio i got this one from my friend missy she sent a variegated plant to our friend aaron here and as a gift for being the messenger i guess um she gifted this uh rio cutting to me and if you guys follow missy on instagram this is her she, you'll know that she loves variegated plants she's in her variegated alocasia era she has so many pretty ones but yeah i wouldn't expect really any other plant to get from missy at the time than a rio and i'm actually really happy about it because I had been wanting this along with the cream splash for a long time. I still don't have the cream splash. I do plan on getting one when prices come down even more because they're still kind of like, I don't know, 30, 30 to 40 dollars here for like a little two inch pot and that's a little more than I want to spend. But for now, the Rio kind of checks off or it kind of scratches that itch for me. And I'm getting some really beautiful leaves on it, like this one that just opened. like look at her she's gorgina george and then this one right here too so yeah i'm actually really loving this plant and i'm liking that it's starting to like really trail now because for a while it just wasn't it wasn't really doing much and now that like multiple growth points have activated i can see one two three four i can see five growth points down at the base that are waking up so um, hopefully the next time I do like a feature on this, we'll have a much bushier plant, but I can't wait for this to start trailing. Oh my gosh, there's this little palm ring outside and it's so cute and small. Oh my gosh. So the next one is another Amanda Anthurium. This one is the Anthurium Crystal Lobes. Um, also has seen better days. This one actually had thrips 
Um, she did not give me thrips. It, uh, it got thrips when I had a bad infestation. To my recollection, none of my Amanda plants got as bad of a thrips um, infestation as bad as this one. This one I had to keep isolated for a really long period of time and it only very recently joined the rest of its siblings on this shelf. Um, for a while it was living isolated in my Billy bookcase. It was also living in on those shelves in the hallway. It was living on my kitchen counter. Um, kind of anywhere I could put it away from my other plants. But it's been probably two months now that I've had it thrips free. I haven't seen any thrips on it, but it did do its fair share of damage. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it left a lot of scarring behind. And yeah, it was just really weird that of all the plants, it really, really liked this one the most. Um, but she's kind of coming back now. She's still holding on to a lot of her leaves. I don't have as much yellowing on this plant as I would normally have on a plant that had thrips as bad as it did. So it's been it's been pretty resilient. It's fought a good fight and won. Um, this new leaf has yet to fully unharden. Unharden. <laughs> Guys, I'm struggling today. Um, it has yet to fully harden and because I've been fussing with it, I know that it's gonna have a lot of dings. Um, if there's anything I can tell you in terms of observation with Anthurium growth, it's when it has a new leaf, don't even look at it. It will remember every single thing you do to it when you move it out. Um, even if you're like pulling it out and like another leaf brushes up against it, that new leaf will remember. Anyway, this is another Anthurium, not from Amanda. This is my Anthurium Clarinervium from Lauren. I grew this from a seedling size, so it was like really, really tiny when I got it. And I thought that I would kill it by now, and somehow it's still here. Obviously, she doesn't look great. She also had a bad case of thrips and spider mites. Um, she hated the plant room, just hated it so much in there. Um, I feel like she likes it a little bit better out here now that it's um, a lot cooler. But uh, yeah, this is a new leaf has quite a bit of spots on it. I do think it's from the spider mites, but I'm not actually seeing any spider mites on it now. It's kind of hard to see sometimes on Anthurium, but it's growth and it's alive. Um, this one's also in no drainage. Uh, I don't know if you can see that big juicy root right there. Lots of algae because it's exposed to a lot of light. It's living right here on that shelf right here so it's getting a ton of light from the south facing window which is why this side is just like filled so bad with algae managed to keep this alive i'm telling you if you guys know my track record i am the killer i am i am the clear nervium killer next plant is another amanda plant put it over here this is my anthurium mag crystal lux um this was one of the plants that kind of my spidey senses were activated. I think my pH might be a little off for my anthurium and no drainage. I can see in the vessel that like the roots are healthy. I just repotted this one not too long ago. You can see some new roots down at the bottom, but this new leaf here should not look like that. You can kind of see a little bit of like the bleaching down at the bottom. I forgot, I forgot the word I'm thinking of where you get this like sort of yellow, this yellow halo on the edges of your um, anthurium leaves. This is not typically something that you want to see on a brand new leaf. If this was on like the oldest leaf, like this one for example, I wouldn't, that and I wouldn't think anything of it. But this is, this leaf is telling me something. It is communicating with me. So um, I think after my dental surgery, I'm going to make it a point to test my pH again. I wanna test my fertilizer water and I wanna test my soil. I wanna test my pond and maybe I'll take you guys along with me as I do that. But um, this, uh, yeah, again, this is the newest leaf. She definitely sized up from the one before. And I'm just happy, I'm just happy with any kind of progression, but she is gonna need my attention somewhat soon. But I think of all of the hybrids, the Lux hybrids that I got from Amanda, this one has been probably the most successful. 
So this is one of the um, plants that came out of my seedling batch. It was a crystal mag dark forgetty eye. So you can kind of see on this leaf, I see a lot of forgetty eye in this leaf, but I still also see crystal mag. And this one specifically, I just had um, hopes that it would have a few sinus because when it was a seedling, it had a few sinus, unlike the other seedlings in that batch where it had little lobes or it had a little sinus. And you can see as it's matured, it like, it almost has a few sinus, but not quite there. Um, some of the older leaves have like a full sinus, but I just, I had hopes that the sinus would fuse. And so here we are again with this new leaf. And you can see it's not comp I don't want to touch it. I don't, it's going to like record everything I'm doing. But you guys can look at the little sinus. It's not completely fused. It looks like it could almost have um, that forgetty eye leaf, but it just, it, it just has a little bit of a lobe. So I still am very hopeful that this seedling, or this, it's not a seedling anymore, that this plant specifically will give me basically a leaf that looks like this with a fused sinus. But it's kind of exciting to see like how much it's evolving as it gets older um, or it matures more and how different it's been from my other seedlings that I would have shown you in part two of this video. And I'm sure you can, I mean, if you go back and you look at that footage, you'll see that this one is so much bigger than my other ones. This was probably one of the strongest seedlings, if not the strongest one to come out of that batch which is why I kept it, because I just kind of like wanted a little remembrance of that plant. And yeah, this is it. So really, really um, anxious to see what this leaf is gonna look like once it's hardened off. Then we have a very, very sad, why is this video so depressing? Um, we have a really sad dark phoenix. This one is another one that hated being in my plant room. Again, we are recovering, but yeah, a lot of those leaves were just like munched and like getting really, really dry and crispy and yellow. This one, look how dark it is. This one almost, almost made it. So you would have seen this in my, um, can't remember which video, sorry you guys. I have too many now, but um, this one emerged on this shelf. It was actually where the clear nervium is right now, right here. It unfurled on the shelf. It was doing really, really well. It was like pristine, beautiful. But I had Millie the Rottweiler here that week. And so I moved this plant higher. I moved it to the very top shelf so that she couldn't get to it because she kept nibbling at my plants there. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna do this plant a favor and save you. Well, unfortunately, the light is not very strong up there. It actually gets the least amount of light out of all of these shelves. As it was unfurling, I think there was just too much water in this vessel, and this just started to like melt. And you can see where it melted here. And now it's like kind of hardening off. It's getting really crispy. So, I mean, for me, that's a good sign. I don't want it to bleed into the plant. Um, any more than it has, it's kind of like healing on itself, which is great. But yeah, the damage unfortunately has been done. And I do see some, again, like haloing um, on the edges, which leads me to believe it could be a pH thing. I may have also gone a little heavy on the fertilizer maybe in the last month. Sometime in the last month, I may have over fertilized. But other than that, um, I'm just, I'm really happy to see this size difference because um, the next leaf should be this big, if not bigger, and I'm definitely going to keep more of an eye on it. I'm gonna be a bit more careful, make sure it's getting the light that it needs, make sure to watch that watering, but the roots are healthy. If you look at the roots, if you think it's a root issue, it's not, it's not a root issue. These are like really big and chunky and happy. So we're learning, we're learning, but you know, I feel like she's she's gonna come back this summer. I'm, I have so much faith in my Ethereums to kind of just look better because it's been a long year and a few months now of them just kind of trying to survive and I don't want them to 
be in that mode anymore where they're just like on high alert. I want them to thrive, not survive. And I do think that it's gonna happen on this shelf. We just have to give them a little bit more time. I've got two Ripsalis here. Always freaking forget the name of this one. I'm so sorry. I will put a label on it one day. I used to think this was the Bassifera. It is not the Bassifera. The Bassifera I do have, which I'll show you later. Um, but this was one of the first Ripsalis that I had in my collection. I got this from Lowe's. It was already a pretty decent basket, but it was like really, really little. It's like maybe about to here. So you can see how much it's grown. I have taken pieces of this plant for friends. Um, I have trimmed it down. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm gonna have to vacuum here later. But um, I've like chopped this thing down so many times. I treat it like my Mykins where I give it regular haircuts so that it can get a little bit fuller because I wanted to fill in some of this like sparseness that you see up at the base. I recently repotted it into no drainage because it was in a pot with drainage holes and this dried out so fast. Um, this is probably one of my thirstiest plants in my collection. So it's been way better now since it's been in no drainage and you can kind of see some of these new roots forming, which is a great sign. She's staying a lot more plump now for longer um, in no drainage. And I wish that I had moved it to no drainage a lot sooner because I think it would be even bigger than it is now. But um, yeah, I, I love this plant. She's, she's just such a great addition to the shelf and I can't really even imagine my shelf without this plant anymore. And I will say that this, I think this is the, the plant that really sparked the Ripsalis obsession for me um, because of how low maintenance it was, how fun it is to just like hold and touch and just see on a shelf. I was like, oh, I've, this, I'm, I've gone off the deep end. I need every Ripsalis ever created or I will scream. The next Ripsalis is my Ripsalis um, Paradoxa Minor. I will say that this one is the one of the faster growing Ripsalis that I have. Um, all of this that you see up here, this is all brand new that's come down from the base, which is really exciting because without it, you can kind of see like how sparse it is at the top and like how full and busy it is at the bottom. And I just really wanted to fill this in a bit more. But yeah, she's so, so fun. So um, just kind of giving you a closer look. It has like really, really um, subtle angled sides. Um, I do have another Ripsalis that I'll show you later that has kind of the same look, but more dramatic. But yeah, this one is really fun. And look, I've got moss growing in there. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> it's like fully alive. It's like created its own little like habitat down there, which is kind of fun. Uh, I did deal with root mealies on this one a bit. Um, if you're noticing that some of these knuckles are turning black like this, check for root mealies because I never would have guessed that it was root mealies until someone brought it up and then when I did a repot, sure enough, I found them um, and I dumped the whole root system into 50-50 alcohol water. Um, I thought that it would react adversely to it, but it didn't and it actually got rid of the root mealies and now um, all of the new growth that are coming in, look, they look really healthy and a lot of the like black patches have stopped now. I feel like a majority of these plants that you're seeing are all Amanda plants, but this is another Amanda plant. This is an Anthurium Wollingeri. This new leaf grew in my care and seriously, it seemed fine. It seemed perfect when it was coming out and as it hardened off, it just, it wants to look like it's in flow, which is kind of funny. It's like doing this little spiral thing and is not completely flat but i will say that i for as much as i struggled with this plant to like get roots on it um i thought that this leaf would be much smaller i was expecting a leaf like this big so this was a really really nice surprise and i'm just hoping the next leaf that comes out on it looks a little more like this but when this leaf was coming out i finally got to experience the magical bronzy one linger eye leaf and it was everything that I thought it would be and more. Hardened one linger eye leaves, they're great. They're beautiful, amazing. 
but I specifically love the one linger eye for the emergent leaves. That bronze color is just incredible. It feels incredible coming out. It's almost like a politiflorum almost, but yeah. I, I do have faith that this one will have better leaves in the future. I just need to be patient, but um, she's rooted now in here. And if you're wondering why it's in this funky little vessel, it's because it's the only thing I had at the moment. And because this is so heavy, this leaf here, everything that I put it in like tipped over. And this was the only thing that really like held its ground. So kind of worked out. I love this one. I feel like I get my fix of the Anthurium doriaki from this plant. I know that it's really nothing like it in terms of like the leaf shape, but like the venation is sort of scratching that itch for me. Of course, I'd love to have a doriaki in the future, but this one is really fun and I feel like it contrasts really nicely with the rest of my Anthurium on the shelf because all of my Anthurium kind of look, I'm not gonna say the same, I feel like that is a sin to say in the plant world. Don't ever tell a plant parent that all of their plants look the same because they are not the same. But you guys know what I mean. A lot of the plants up here don't have like very striking venation. They have like the really dark leaves. So this is a nice, a nice one to have on the shelf to accompany them. And I am just excited for this leaf to get bigger because I think it's Lauren who has one at her shop or maybe it's a maybe it's different but very similar and hers is a lot bigger and <sighs> so beautiful i still appreciate it in it's like smaller more juvenile form but i am super excited to see this one um get larger now this one <laughs> is another one of my micro terrariums don't make fun of the lid that i did it's just like saran wrap and then i i like used fire to like suction it onto the top because I couldn't find a cork that fit this but it's just fluval stratum and moss so this moss used to be like a brown color some of it was green but some of it was brown and I just wanted to bring it back to life so this is it and if you're wondering what kind of moss it is it's just sphagnum moss um, if you give your moss the right conditions they can come back alive like this which is kind of magical and yeah, now it's all green, which is great. I haven't opened this thing in a while. I did mix a bit of a bit of biochar into the fluval stratum. Just I don't I don't know. I, I feel like it keeps bad bacteria away, but um, yeah, kind of just lives up there. Nothing nothing crazy. I hope you guys don't mind, but I moved back into the bedroom because the sun moved this way, and I don't know. It feels a little like bleh in the living room right now whereas it's like nice and bright in here so for serotonin levels <laughs> i'm gonna move into here but anywho um moving right along this is my indonesian pappy hybrid and i have featured this one recently in my notching video where i talked about how to get um growth to activate <laughs> along the stem rather than from the top. So this is the newest leaf on it. This was actually not from the top catafil. This was from the bottom. Um, so it was from a secondary growth point off the very bottom. And there's actually another one poking out now. Yeah, did not expect a leaf this size for auxiliary um, bud growth, but I will take it. And she actually looks pretty good. And I'm just hoping to get more of these leaves because this is like exactly what I bought this plant for. This leaf shape, this leaf size. I wouldn't even care if it didn't get any bigger than this because this is just like perfect for me. Um, I will say the plus of this leaf is that it's really nice and dark, very minimal cosmetic damage. She's glowing back up. She's getting there slowly but surely. Not quite there yet, but getting there. We've got another Amanda plant. This is my Anthurium Novelty Ace of Spades. This is the leaf that it came with. Um, you can see it's kind of starting to go now. This grew in the plant room. Um, lots of sort of damage along the leaf. Had a little bit of a hard time coming out of the caterpillar. This one grew on the plant shelf and you can see it's in much better condition than any of these leaves previously. Uh, not perfect, but I'll take it. She is really nice and dark, 
very little cosmetic damage on it. And then this one is just starting to um, unfurl now. And the sinus just looks so mean. Look at that sinus. She's so angry. It's kind of like this one. It's kind of got like a wider sinus, which is not something that I was expecting, but I will take it. And I just love how like red this emergent leaf is. I've definitely had way better luck with the Novelty Ace than I have with the <laughs> regular Ace of Spades. But um, yeah, she's really cute. She's got super dark leaves. The abaxials kind of stay this um, burgundy-ish color. And I feel like this lighting is not giving you guys. It's not, not giving. I might need to move over there. Let's go do that. Um, so the next one up is this Anthurium Forgetii that came from uh, Alice's seed batch. And I'm not gonna lie, I've struggled with this one a little bit. And this has been my experience with the Forgetii in general. I am not really all that surprised. I have historically killed every single Forgetii that has come into my house. Not proud of that. I'm not flexing at all, but um, it is what it is. I'm just not good with Forgetti Eye. So this one was no, no exception. She did mention to me that some of the Forgetti Eyes that she kept were more of like the runts, although I don't know if this was a runt or if this was a stronger seedling in the batch. But um, it got spider mites, and when it got spider mites, it did not like it at all. All of the leaves, like the damage was so bad. I didn't want to look at it. Any I did not want to look at it anymore. So I chopped them off. <laughs> you can see the petioles are still there from all of those leaves. But I mentioned this in another video. I'm not really, really actively washing down plants that have bad infestations on them. I'm just kind of like chopping off those leaves and starting fresh because it's really helped me like contain the numbers of spider mites in this house and especially as summer approaches it's only going to get more difficult so yeah now i'm just not taking that time to like wash down leaves that already have damage i don't see the point in trying to like preserve it when it already looks so sad so that was the case of this one but um i do kind of see this caterpill plumping up a bit so hopefully the next leaf is looking a little bit better than this one. This is what remains of my variegated Anthurium batarifolium. I did chop this one recently for a purge. I chopped the bottom off and I did have probably about four or five leaves on this top cutting, but after I chopped it, it just started to yellow. The bottom leaf started yellowing, so just chopped them off. This is the newest leaf to come out on it. Uh, not a lot of variegation. It's really just like the tiniest little splotch So I'm not quite sure if this thing is gonna revert or if it's gonna surprise me and throw a Variegated leaf next, but I guess only time will tell uh, This has been a plant that I've enjoyed having in my collection. I really would be sad if it reverted especially since I chopped um, a very like highly variegated part off to sell. Although I do have a lot of stem, I bet that if I like notched it or I took like cuttings again, I do think that the new leaves that come out of it would be variegated. At least that's what the optimistic side of me is telling myself. Um, but yeah, this is her now. I don't think that she's liked really being out of an EXO. I think she really would do a lot better if she was in one of my greenhouses, but again, with Anthurium being in greenhouses, I, I've just dealt with too much of the like fungal issues and I just don't want to go down that road again. Okay, here is another Amanda plant. This one has absolutely hated being in my, in my care. It does not like my house, it does not like me, it does not like my personality or anything about me, and it's showing me. I know that it doesn't look as bad as probably some of the Anthurium that I showed you earlier, but this should not look like this. Um, lots of like crisping at the edges and just like yellowing and like, oh, chloro chlorosis. That's what I was thinking. It's very chlorotic. Like you can see the edges here. And again, I think this is a pH thing, but this one also 
historically struggled with root rot and stem rot and that's why it's in this mix right now of tree fern fiber and pond because this is my go-to last ditch effort save my plant <laughs> mix um, so if it doesn't like this mix I don't think it's gonna like anything else so hopefully we can get some roots on it I'm not seeing anything right now which is why it probably looks like which is why it looks like not probably which is why it looks like and um, yeah, you can see a new leaf is coming. I just, I don't know how cute it's gonna be. But of course, I'm setting my expectations really low. I don't really expect to see a lot of like delicious growth on this for a while until we can get like an established root system. So just keeping my eye on this one for now. But it is a really, really beautiful plant. I feel like it looks pretty similar to like a juvenile dark phoenix and I love like the muted venation, I love this narrow leaf, I love the leaf color. Um, it's just not looking its best right now. She's so pretty. I just love a good crystal. Crystallinums are just like one of my favorites. Um, I've actually had this crystal for quite some time now. I got this from Lauren at North Shore Tropicals before we were like even really friends. Um, I used to just purchase from her from purges and stuff, but it was from before we got close. So I've had this for a while. This one has been through it all. It's had thrips, it's had spider mites, it's had root rot, it's had stem rot, it's had everything you can think of and more. But she prevails. You can see I chopped off her lower leaves. The parts of the petiole are still there because of spider mites. It's been, it's been a rough year, you guys. Not 2023, 2022 was rough. And I was just like chopping off plants I was just chopping leaves off left and right to get things established um, or re-established in this house of who the boss is, which is me. <sighs> We're slowly getting there. But man, I just really love like the emergent leaves on crystallinums. They just get me. So anyway, someone asked me, forgot who, sorry. They asked me in a video why I don't chop off like the entire petiole when I chop leaves off. And that's because um, I feel like the nutrients that are in that stem or in that petiole can move back into the plant once it's chopped. And also, it's kind of hard to remove the petiole completely from the stem when it's fresh. So I just cut off the leaf, I wait for them to like turn yellow like this, and then it like snaps off a lot easier. I don't know if this one's quite ready yet, but yeah, snaps off a lot easier than it would when it's like green. Sorry, I can't help myself. I need to peel this. This is my original Ripsalis Paradoxa and she's getting so long. I cannot believe how long she is. She started, I think the longest, um, the longest one I had when I first got it was maybe about this long, I think. So yeah, this is just like turning into like a crazy crazy plant i do think i see an opportunity here though to like give it a chop at this knuckle get it replanted because i do want to like fill this pot more but um she's really cute and i do find this one to be a little bit more finicky in terms of care i i think it's probably I think it's the Ripsalis that I'm most afraid of. I'm not going to say afraid. That's not the right word. That I'm most... It's the Ripsalis that I feel is the most delicate in my entire collection. I feel like this one is more prone to root rot. It's more prone to... Um, stem, is this stem rot? What is this? It just rots. Like this part can easily rot if you just like puncture it a little bit and it gets like infected or like it doesn't heal correctly it can like damage the entire thing so when I had this before like when I first got it I did have some issues with rotting um, I had some issues with rooting it and it was really like a learning a learning process of just trial and error and like observation trying different substrates trying different environmental conditions and I feel like I've kind of like I feel like I've got it down to a science now. This one does not need necessarily a ton of light. It would likely do a lot better if it had more light that I'm giving it, but it, it does do very, very, very well in pond, in no drainage, um, and not really leaving a huge reserve. Um, I 
thought I... I thought I saw a spider. This one actually does well if you just wet the pond and then leave it. I have left sort of a larger reserve down at the bottom and have observed some root rot on weeks where we go a long time without the sun. So yeah, still kind of learning in that way. I do, I obviously have this on my shelf now where it has light, but it's on the very top. So sometimes if I'm like, you know, I'll check the weather and see that we're literally not going to get any sun that week. I'll move it a shelf down where there's a 10 watt bar and at least it's getting some controlled amount of light during the day. But you can kind of see where I struggled a bit this area that's like black so this was mushy before like really mushy and I thought I was gonna lose the whole thing but right now I'm kind of in a place with my plants where I don't jump to rescue it right away I whether it's root rot like that I can see or if it's something like this I don't immediately go in there and see if I can help it because Historically when I've done that I've caused more damage than good and I'm glad that I left it because it's looked like this for Ever probably for like a year now. It's looked like that and um, I have had a Good amount of new growth from that stem. So all of this down here is new within the last like I want to say month um, So yeah, it's happy. It's just a little bit crazy looking i do think i can afford to give it a haircut now although i don't know i've been a little bit more stingy in chopping this because i find that it's a little bit slower in terms of growth so whenever i have any growth i feel badly about chopping it but i do want to fill this pot in a little more this is another um anthurium that i showed in my notching video um i do still have a bit of the Oh, it looks like one of them fell out. You can see where I notched down below. But something that I forgot to mention is that as if you don't, if you don't stick your plastic in deep enough, as it heals, it'll push out that plastic, which is what happened on the lower one. As best as you can. Um, try and look at where that incision is right here. I can't stick it in. It won't go in because it's healed it healed on itself and that's why you want to put these in because you want to avoid the healing process which sounds kind of weird for a plant but the um, only way that I've been able to get growth from notching is when it's not allowed to heal on itself and um, yeah it pushes out growth that way anyway sorry just a another tangent this is a clarinarium from my friend Erin this is Another clarinervium that I was so sure that I was going to kill. I don't know why it's still alive. I am glad that I've gotten some pretty good advice since I've brought it home. Um, the best advice that I've gotten is to treat it like a succulent, which is really weird. Succulents can go like longer without being watered, but when they do need water, they like severely need it and will be very dehydrated and they can take like thorough, like deep, deep waterings. So that's what I do to this clarinervium. I allow it to dry out pretty much all the way. Like you can see right now there's, I just watered this one like two days ago. So I'm gonna wait until this is like essentially bone dry and then I'm gonna just water it like very deeply and even allow some water to stay in this, in this pot. And yeah, she's really kind of flourished ever since I, went in with that mindset or that care advice but unfortunately she was also a victim to spider mites which is why she got two of her pals chopped off here but the new leaf is really really cute and doesn't have really any spider mite damage that I can see which is amazing and it's such a cute little leaf. I love the Clarinervium so much. I just wish it was an easier one for me to grow but I think as more time goes on I'm getting more of the hang of it so if you struggle with the Clarinervium too, do not give up. Um, just treat it like a succulent. Taking a quick little Anthurium break to bring you my big billy. I don't know why this leaf is still here. Seriously, I've mentioned this before. This import leaf, I don't know why, I don't know why it hasn't died off yet. It has been, has it been three? I think it's been th th 
three or four years or something since this leaf has been on here. Okay, maybe not three. Maybe not four. Maybe like three years. But like, I did not expect this leaf to stay on. And there were two of them. The second one only fell off maybe like a month or two ago. But they held on strong for so much longer than I thought they would. I really thought that it was going to die off maybe after a month. But it has surprised me. And all of the new leaves that have come from this plant are just... I couldn't have asked for a better Billy, honestly. This one has just like rewarded me in ways that I feel like I don't deserve. Um, it's always kind of had just like a beautiful growth pattern. No matter where I put it in the house, they all kind of like are perky. They face somewhat the same way. Um, if you saw my other Billy, you know that like it just kind of has like a weird growth pattern. Some of them have the tendency to like grow downwards like this. And even though this is on the very top shelf, it's still looking like this and just like so, so cute. Um, it does have a new leaf coming out right here. It's very sticky, so I don't want to touch it. And I do think maybe by, I don't know, maybe by next year, we'll get some leaves that are like maybe close to this leaf size. I don't think I'm going to see leaves this large in a long time, if ever. I do think, I don't know, I feel like growing it indoors where I have it, it's going to kind of like max out at a certain point in terms of like the growth but I'm honestly happy with this size like this to me is like a very nice billy size and when I initially like saw pictures of the billy I bought it for leaves that look I wanted it for the leaves that look like this so even if it didn't like mature beyond what it is now I would be so happy i would be <laughs> over the moon and yeah it just looks a little bit bananas right now but it's kind of cute whenever i see this plant i just imagine like a mom with all her little babies around her she's just kind of like watching over them so i think that i will be very sad when this leaf dies off all the babies are going to be without their mother and are going to be stuck with me okay next up is this um Anthurium Roquianum Esmeralda. Esmeralda. I don't know why I said that in a way that would lead you to believe that there was more to the name. I got this one from Lauren at North Shore for my birthday. And this was one of my wishlist plants. And I still really, really love it. I just wish that it would wake up. Um, this is the only leaf that has grown in my care. It did also have spider mites. I, I think, really, if... Um, you're watching this channel just assume that at, at like any given point all of my plants had spider mites or thrips or both we're a pesty house she emerged on that shelf didn't really have any issues at all coming out but um as she began to harden off and grow she was hitting other plants and it registered it it held a grudge and that's why it looks like that um i can see this caterpillar here slowly but surely getting larger every day. So hopefully we have a new leaf sometime soon. I also have this one in no drainage. Um, not a ton of new roots, honestly. I thought that there were there would be new roots by now, but I think that she's asleep, like asleep, asleep, like really asleep. Every part of her is asleep. So we'll just let her sleep. It's not summer yet anyway. This is a crystal mag. At least I think it's a crystal mag. Or maybe it's just a crystal. I think this is just a crystal because I don't see any... The petioles are really round. So um, another one that I got from Lauren. Not going to go too much into detail about this one. These were very rehabby as well. Um, they were not this brown <laughs> when I got them. They were a lot um, nicer grown in Lauren's greenhouse. But... This one has kind of been through a lot too. It was also living in the plant room when things were not ideal conditions. Um, haven't really had a lot of growth on it at all since I repotted it into this vessel. Um, but I do see some new roots, which is good. I think it's just focusing on like getting itself reestablished before it does anything up here. But I'm a patient girl, and because things are, al are already so packed on that shelf, I'm really not anxious at all 
to get a new leaf on this one. I'm kind of just enjoying it for what it is. And she can stay there and enjoy my brook linen sheets. It's comfy, isn't it? I feel like this seems repetitive, but this is my Anthurium Crystallinum Black. I imported this from, I believe it was Tropicals Plants. This one has actually been more difficult than any of the crystals that I've owned before. I don't know, I don't really don't know what it is about this one specifically, but all of the leaves just kind of always look like this. Um, I even had it growing in a greenhouse before and the leaves still were very not completely happy looking. Um, I have tried it with drainage holes. Right now it's without. It could probably use a repot. This is another plant that could probably use my attention. It's just been in this vessel for so long that it's just kind of become a permanent fixture in this apartment. But I do need to like do something with it. And I'm hoping that some of the new leaves that come out of it on the, in the future are a little bit less banged up than this. Um, I have not... This, this leaf actually grew on that shelf. Um, as you can see, it's cramped up there, so this thing was just getting like pushed up against other leaves. So I do need to be a little bit more watchful. Um, I will say that's one drawback of having like a really lush plant shelf is that if you're not observing that shelf pretty heavily all the time, any new growth that you have on it, if it like grows up against another plant or grows up against the side of the pot or up against the wall, um, a lot of the damage will be registered on that, on that new leaf and you'll have things that look like this. Yeah. Anywho, that's that. <laughs> She's crunchy. The last one on that shelf is my newest acquisition. This is an Anthurium brownie eye. Um, this one came from, well it went from Erin to Alice, Alice to me. And, you know, I repotted this maybe two weeks ago. I thought it would have sorted itself out by now and maybe, like, started to, like, oh, there we go, there we go, okay. Let's see if I can... Like, I've wanted that leaf to just, like, be like this for so long. And it looks like it just needed a little help, but, like, see how these are, like, facing... I just, I just want it to look normal. <laughs> just, it just looks so crazy right now. But kind of a fun addition to the Anthurium shelf. Takes up a lot of space for sure. I uh, don't know how it'll be able to live on there once other plants start growing a little bit more. But for now, that is where she resides. She has a fun, a fun leaf. Look at these little elephant ears. Um, it's not a plant that I generally would flock to. Like if I ever saw this at a show or a plant shop, I 100% would not get it. But I don't know, for some reason, I just felt like I needed to take this one home. Um, I'm not sure how long it'll stay with me. I'm sure it'll run its course. I'll feel like I got enough time with it and got it out of my system and then rehome it. And sometimes that's just how it is with my plants. Um, but of course there are other plants like my Tordum that are with me for life. But I just wanted to see how this one would look on my shelf and I actually kind of enjoy it. I just wish that the leaves would sort itself out because the growth pattern is not, it's not ideal right now. But it is what it is and I'm trying to accept her for who she is. Um, so now we're going to move into the very few plants that I keep in my Ikea Billy, my Ikea Billy bookshelf. The first one is yet another Amanda plant. This is a Pap Wonder Boy, and it's it's growing pretty steadily. I mean, there's not been like a huge development since the last time that you would have seen it on the video where we you know showed the plants for the first time. Not a ton of like size growth difference, but growth nonetheless. Um, this one's been pretty like low-key pretty easy for me it hasn't thrown any fits like some of the other ones have um, so that's been a nice surprise new leaf is looking pretty good I'm hoping that in filming this video and taking it out I am not messing things up I really try now um, to leave my anthurium as they are when a new leaf is coming because I tend to just mess things up when 
a leaf is brand new, I get excited. I want to take photos of it. I want to like make sure that it has enough space and then I end up dinging it and you know, the whole thing, but it's a learning process. So this next one is an, an, another <laughs> Amanda plant. I should just like throw in an icon every time it's an Amanda plant, but this one is an Anthurium Ace of Spades crossed with the Lux and it's so cute. This one actually was in my prop box for a long time because it just would not, it wouldn't root for me and I struggled with it a bit. This leaf kept like getting really wilty and sad so I just, yeah, chucked it into my high humidity box for, um, I don't know, a month or two and it finally, finally gave me another leaf and I, I do think that there's been a pretty substantial um, difference in the way it looks from one leaf to another. With this second leaf, you can really see a lot of the um, luxurians texture, like the pebbliness of the luxurians, but then it also has like that like little red sinus, which I love so much. I do think this one is gonna be really, really stunning when, once it gets a little larger. We just have to keep fingers, toes, and eyes crossed that we can make it over this hurdle because I feel like Things can still be very dicey with Anthurium this small if you're not careful, um, which is why I have it in my um, Billy shelf, just to kind of give it a little bit more warmth and a little extra something to support it along the way. Also living in that bookcase is my Anthurium King of Spades. I'll say that this one was probably one of the Anthuriums that struggled the most in my plant room. Um, this one was on the brink of death many many times um, I did chop this plant recently not recently but the last time that I went to California I chopped this plant for Amanda and I wasn't very careful when repotting it um, and I did it right before the trip which I do not recommend because then you can't you know keep an eye on it while you're away while I was gone the stem rotted all of the roots rotted so I had to start over but it's safe to say she like bounced back pretty aggressively um, and then this is the newest leaf on it. It does have, again, a bit of chlorosis down here. And um, it's looking a little, like, warped. And this side was hitting the wall in the billy um, bookshelf, like, while it was unfurling. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. But, like, the size is pretty impressive um, in comparison to the last leaf which is this one and I'm just really happy to see any growth at all because this one was dormant for a really really long time while it was recovering there was not much action happening and I'm just finally happy to see something on it it's funny because this leaf is a little wonky like this side is much bigger than this side and it kind of like bulges out this way um, whereas this one is like kind of puckered in so it is still a little soft um, I do think it has a bit more hardening off to do. It's not quite there yet, but I do think that this is pretty much the size that it's going to be. I think it's just going to round off a little bit more. I forgot about one very important plant on my plant shelf. I cannot believe I forgot about this one. My Philodendron Heteracium Bar Heteracium, aka the Philodendron Mykins. My pride and joy, my child, my everything. Um, I'm not going to bring it in here or else it's going to be sheath galore and I don't want to get any plant stuff on my new sheets so I'm just gonna pop in some footage from the shelf um, I do have a full care video like I said on how I got the Mykins this large I just chop it a lot I give it a lot of showers regular watering reg regular fertilization not a lot of not a ton of light and um, it loves it this one is definitely one of my favorite plants um, in my entire collection. One that I take a lot of time to care for because it's so prone to pests. I try and just stay on top of it because I this is one plant in my collection that I do not want to have like a full outbreak on because when it does have um, thrips or spider mites, it looks so, so sad and the leaves really react to it. Portally. This one is a plant that I baby a lot. It is a lot of work. It's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, but it's worth it. And I'm hoping that one day I can get a shelf up somewhere in my kitchen that I can just have this plant alone on a shelf because 
even though it kind of makes the entire plant shelf look very very like wild and full I think that I personally would enjoy this plant more if it was just by itself and trailing um, rather than kind of camouflaged with the rest of that plant wall. Um, now continuing on into the Billy bookcase plants. This is my Dicaria matagariensis. If you guys know, I got this for my birthday last year from my dearest, dearest friends. And there are actually two plants in this pot. It was not this large when I got it. I know it's kind of hard to see. It's very, very dainty. But um, this one surprised me at how easy it's been. It does have a very gnarly case of spider mites, which you can see. Can you see the webbing? Not the best photo, but I have had the worst time trying to get rid of spider mites on this thing. Luckily, with how many spider mites there are, it's it's not really doing a lot of damage to the plant. Um, I have done like an alcohol spray and it did get rid of the spider mites for a little bit. Ow. <laughs> But on some of the new growth that came out, it just completely burnt it to ashes. So I haven't been doing that a lot. I've just been kind of trying to like wash it down as much as I can. But I think what it's going to come to is me unpotting this thing and just soaking the entire plant in some kind of like pesticide soap or something because the um, spider mites are relentless on this thing. I can't even like believe how hard it's been to get rid of it. Com I mean, considering they're, it's just all sticks. What exactly are they trying to get at? Like, I just don't understand. So it's kind of infuriating, but at the same time, it's still growing like crazy. I feel like this is like one of the faster growers of all of my like non-aeroids which was really surprising I just kind of looked at this plant like just through photos and stuff I assumed that it was a very very slow grower and a plant that just gave you very very little growth every year but all of this down here is it's all brand new all of this it's crazy and um, in terms of the substrate, I just have it in a very like gritty, sandy, um, sort of like succulent cactus mix. It is in a pot with drainage, but you can see that it is within a pot that has no drainage. So it kind of is in no drainage. And the reason that I've done that is because it is a very thirsty plant. I water this one religiously once a week a very very deep watering and without fail exactly a week after it's going to need water again so i decided to get it into a vessel without drainage so that i can keep a little bit of extra water down there and it's been fine but um yeah one of my favorites again i am so happy to have this i just wish it didn't have spider mites but it's not the end of the world i mean it's still growing pretty steadily even having as many spider mites as it does it just definitely adds to the spook factor. The last anthurium in that um, bookshelf or in that bookcase is my last Amanda plant that I'm going to show you. So this is an anther this is an anthurium chia presents crossed wait anthurium chia presents crossed with an anthurium vera presents. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. This one was a bit unsuspecting. I had never heard of this plant before, either of them, um, let alone the hybrid of them. And of course, Amanda just knows, she knows me so well, um, or she knows us so well. And this is 100% a plant that is up my alley because look at this new leaf. It definitely, like Alice's looks a bit more like an Equidurens if you know what that plant is. Hers is a bit wider, whereas mine is a little bit skinnier, although I'm not sure if maybe as mine gets larger it'll start to widen a little bit. But I am fully, fully obsessed with this leaf. I love it so much. Like when this new leaf came out, I was like, this is why. This is why she sent us this plant because it is just so delicious. It doesn't have like any special texture to it. It feels just like an equidurens. Um, but I love this leaf. I love the sinus. I love the lobes. Just a long leaf gets me. So um, this one has been a really, really nice surprise. 
And then finally in that cabinet is my insane Dioscoria discolor that is growing from every possible place you can think of. Um, I did have to trim it back because it was literally wrapping around other plants and I just couldn't contain it so I chopped it a lot. A lot of these vines that were kind of like going everywhere chopped them and it's coming back pretty aggressively. I don't think it liked me woman handling it like that and it's showing me who is boss really. Um, sorry, the lighting keeps like getting really flushed when I move the the plants, but uh, I, I love this. No matter how much it stresses me out with how like robustly it grows, it's just such a rewarding plant to grow. It's such a fun plant to grow. Um, I didn't think that it was going to be this easy. I didn't think that I would have a plant that looks like this, I'll tell you that much, because I started with like a two leaf cutting or a one leaf cutting and um, I didn't even think I'd be able to get it to root. Some people told me that I couldn't um, grow it without like the bulb or the tuber or whatever it you know is sold with because it was just a stem um, a stem with a leaf and now we're here I can see why this would be more of like an invasive species where it grows natively because holy smokes it will put your other plants in a chokehold for sure I eventually feel like I need to get this on its own because it does keep kind of sneaking into other plants like wrapping around other plants like petioles and stuff and I just don't really want to deal with that anymore so hopefully um, I don't know I can find a more permanent place for this plant but it is quite liking it in that in that cabinet I can see some extra floral nectaries being pushed out which is the first that I've seen on this plant. I've never seen it push out any EFN before, so I'm a bit surprised by that, but um, you know, she's growing like a dream. Look at her. She's Gorgina George. We're almost done. We are now moving into those floating Ikea shelves that I have. I don't know why I did that. Um, you know, those clear acrylic shelves that I have hanging on the right side of my Billy bookcase so if you guys are wondering um, those bookshelves are still sold at Ikea I don't know why they're not more popular because they're great so if you have a chance they're not expensive at all um, you can get them online you can get them in store I feel like every time I'm in the store there's like so many of them so anyways um, that's that but this here is my Ripsalis bassifera so um, as you would have seen before I thought the other Ripsalis that I had that had the much thinner leaf, I thought those, I thought that was a Ripsalis bassifera for the longest time, but it turns out it's actually this guy here. And I hope this is a bassifera, or else I'm just feeding you guys very, very wrong information left and right. I do like how like thick and juicy this one is. I'm hoping that, you know, as more time goes on, I can finally get some like nice trailing dudes happening because I bought this as a really small plant. Like these were barely like sticking out of the pot. It was super tiny and I was like, man, it's gonna take forever to get like a trailing bassifera, but um, I didn't wanna pay the price for like the large ones, like whereas this one I got for like five bucks or something. So patience is slowly paying off because she's, she's longer than the pot now and that happened like faster than I even like imagined. So yeah, very happy with this one. I will say that this is probably one of my favorite Ripsalis varieties. It's just so like plump and like delicious. <laughs> um, and yeah, once they get like, once they get going, once you have like a full trailing pot of it, they are so majestic. They are so magical. I love them so much. So this is one that I'm pretty anxious to like get some growth on. But it's gonna be, it's still gonna be a long ways till like I have the Ripsalis bassifera that I want. But the fun is in the journey, right? Yeah, that's what we are telling ourselves. I was hoping by the time I filmed this video that these flowers would open, but my Tashidia hirsuta is flowering and it's so cute. I'm usually kind of scared of little flowers like this, but I think the reason I don't mind it is because it's not clustered like a Hoya. And I will show you the beginnings of 
a Hoya flower, which it looks so disgusting, and I only kept it on for this video. But anywho, this is my Deshidia Hirsuta, one of my favorite Deshidias of all time because of just like how fuzzy and coin-like these leaves are. I'm not gonna like, I've said it so many times why I love this plant, but I do think that this is a really, really underrated one that more people should have because they would really enjoy it. I started with just a little cutting. I got a tiny cutting from a friend. It was probably about like this, this small, that's it. And that cutting has turned into this lovely little pot. So if I can keep the growth going, like this, I should in theory have like a nice full pot um, sometime, sometime <laughs> in the future. Um, but this is not one that I'm cutting a whole lot because I am trying to get it nice and full. Um, but yeah, I am really super um, surprised to see a little flower. It's so, so cute and darling. Um, I can't wait to see what it looks like once it opens. But yeah, I kind of wish, or is this open? Is that that's not fully open is it? I mean it kind of looks like a flower but I feel like it opens more than that I don't know anything about this plant besides the fact it's fuzzy and I love it guys I don't know the names of any of my Hoyas Hoya croniana silver sure I don't think it's a lacnosa anyway I wanted to show you this nasty diabolical thing from hell I've already chopped off three of them it's funny there was like one night where my husband and I were eating dinner and I was, I was like, I have like the nose of a bloodhound and I just like sniffed, I got like a whiff of it and I was like, oh hell no, I know that there's a flower on this plant and sure enough there was just like this big, oh, like nasty demogorgon looking thing and um, chopped it right off. I don't know who says that these blooms smell good because I don't agree with you. I think you're wrong. I think it smells like actual garbage it stinks so bad my husband doesn't like it either but to be fair i don't really love the smell of flowers i feel like it kind of has this like bitter this bitter smell there's only very few kinds of flowers that i like the smell of and this my friends is not one of them so i will be chopping this thing off as soon as i'm done filming but i just wanted to show it to you because how could anyone like that look at it it's so like it's clustered and they're so like perfectly spaced apart. It's not right, it's not ethical, and it just gives me the heebie-jeebies. I have goosebumps on my scalp. This one was repotted recently. I combined my current plant with um, ones that I inherited from my friend Erin, and now we have this big lush pot, and I'm kind of loving it, honestly. I didn't super, super love this plant when I just had that little one. Obviously, I thought it was really pretty. You guys know that I love silver plants, but once I added it to the rest of it, I was like, yep, love this guy. But I do think I can afford to like chop a little bit down here. It's kind of looking a little leggy. I think I could chop right here, propagate it, and then stick it back in this pot. Yeah, I I do enjoy this one. I do think this is a croniana. I think the lacunosa has a bit of rounder leaves or it doesn't have these like little abs that you can see very or maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. So let's just let's just cut it there and say that I love this plant and um that's it. Next is my humble little Hoya linearis that I got from Alice recently. Uh not recently, uh, maybe two months ago now. I used to have a really big pot. If you guys followed my earlier videos on this channel, um, you would have known that. But unfortunately, that one saw the light. Saw the light. But I gave Alice a cutting from my plant and hers is like this nice big thing now. So she gave cuttings back to me. So it's kind of like we've gone full circle. And this is why you share your plants with friends, people, because when you inevitably kill one of them, you'll have backups and it's just like insurance. So anywho, yeah, this is that. Um, it has been growing um, more recently. There is some growth down at the base here. You can see I gave it a little splint because it bent almost completely. And um, I just put a little bit of tape on it and it's actually kept growing. So um, before you guys, like if you, if you Oh my gosh, my sister is blowing up my phone. If you bend a petiole or something, if it's not completely like snapped in half and there's still a bit of that tissue that's salvageable, try to splint it because there's a good chance that you might be able to save it and allow that tissue to heal. 
So yeah, really happy that I didn't chop it because it would look even leggier than it does now. Um, I'm just hoping to get more growth down at the base. That's usually how it happens with Linearis. It'll like take a break from growing down at the bottom and it'll shoot out a bunch from like the, the very top and then it'll keep growing from the bottom. So this is a plant that definitely likes to fill in if you give it the right conditions and you actually care for it. I do have this one in the drainage in pond um oh. and it's doing well this is a ripsalis that i feel like not many people maybe know about or talk about it is confused with the ripsalis trigona i actually thought it was a trigona when i first saw it but it is not so a trigona has three sides but you'll see with um, some of these more mature parts down here, there's actually like, there's five, I think there's five sides. Pent, yeah, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five. And yeah, it's a fun, it's a fun one. It looks very, very similar to the Ripsalis trigona. I believe Arium Botanicals just got like a really like large shipment in and they're like big. Um, I'll throw in a photo. Hopefully I can find a photo here. There, his, the ones that he sourced are just way more mature than this one. And um, I would love if mine got that big and that like bushy because it kind of reminds me of like a Cissus quadrangularis almost. Um, it's like if a Cissus quadrangularis and a Ripsalis trigona had a child, a love child, it would be the Pentaptera. Yeah, again, this is another plant that I had to grow from really a really small plant, and I'm just hoping we get some yeah, length on it. Freaking fung fungus snats. Um, I hope I hope we can get some more length on it because right now it looks it looks kind of cuckoo. This is another Hoya. This is a Hoya Eve Rocherii, and um, this one's doing some wild some <laughs> wild things. Look at these two runner mans, runner guys that like wrapped around each other, wrapped around each other, and it's just sticking straight up. I know it's hard to see, but she's just sticking straight up. Anywho, this one I cannot take credit for growing this long. I did have one plant, which was, I think it was this one, this one that's sticking straight up right here. And then I acquired these from my friend Erin who just gave me like the rest of her plant basically. So I just filled it in. I do have a lot of like like weird empty gaps here. So I do think at once some point I'm going to like chop it and get it back in the pot. But um, this one's really fun. I actually quite enjoy these leaves. Let me give you sort of like an up close of what the leaves look like. Um, sort of from afar, it, it looks really unsuspecting and not special and doesn't really look like much. But once you look at it up close, doesn't this look exactly like the ficus alii? It's like if the ficus alii was a Hoya. And I think that's why I love it so much. I just really love the long leaf and it has a bit of like a sinister look to it, which I love even more. Yeah, I just really enjoy having this one. I just wish it was a little bit fuller. I'm not going to go too in-depth about this one because this is just another Ripsalis um, Paradoxa Minor. This one actually came from that other plant, I just separated them. I do plan on eventually putting them back into one pot, I think, just because I want it to be a little bit fuller and I don't necessarily need another trailing plant since I've acquired so many new trailing plants um, recently. but. Yeah, again, another plant that's growing really well. This one is actually in a mixture of, I think, tree fern fiber and soil. And I've got some like good growth coming in on this one finally. This one also had root mealies, so she's, she's kind of just starting to come back now. Um, I could be treating this better. It's just in water. I should be treating it better, but I'm not. And it's because it's just, I don't know. It's kind of just be, become sort of like an afterthought now, but um, yeah, we gotta do something about about her soon. 
This is one of my funky, my funky plants. Um, I thought that I was gonna get more balls like this because I bought it like this. It like basically was just this little thing. Had none of this when I got it, and I was like, oh my gosh, it's gonna be so cute. I'm gonna grow all these little balls. It's gonna be like a mountain of balls. And then I got tentacles. I've grown to appreciate her for what she is instead of what she's not. And I'm just gonna leave it at that. Last plant on that shelf, which is actually my favorite, is this. This is Quadrangularis. Um, this is another plant that I like to hype up a lot because I just feel like it doesn't get, I feel like it doesn't get a lot of love, um, doesn't get a lot of attention. But this is just a plant that I can't imagine my life without. And um, I recently watched one of Alice's video where she was talking about her trailing plants. I will link that in the description if you're into trailing plants. That was a really fun video to watch. And she talked about the Cissus quadrangularis and it just made me so happy because this is not a plant that was really on her radar. She came over one day, I saw that my Cissus was looking really lush and was like, you need one of these chopped it for her, gave it to her, she was like, okay, we'll see what happens. And now it's like become like a plant that makes her really happy. And so um, when I do things like that, where I like gift plants to people, like very specific plants that I feel like they would love and then they end up do really loving it, it just makes my heart all fuzzy and warm. But you know, as many times as I've chopped this thing, it comes back 10 times more aggressively and ferociously. Like I just chopped this piece for my for my mother-in-law I chopped it up here and this whole thing grew within I want to say like three weeks it was insane it just came back so aggressively now I'm seeing some growth up here at the base of it and yeah this thing is just getting really really long um, some of these leaves are getting really big I just find that it requires very regular watering um, I do believe this is part of the grape family so it does enjoy wet feet so yeah, I think once I repot this, eventually I will get it into a much larger vessel and one that I can keep Leka down at the bottom so that I can keep like a reserve of water down there at all times just because it does dry out really fast. Right now I'm watering this like once a week, but I think I could actually get away with watering it even twice a week. This is a really, really great plant and it's fun because it puts out these like little... Um, what are these? These little vines and they just like kind of wrap around anywhere that they can and it's so it's so cute and the little leaves are super precious. It all, it also puts out little grapes sometimes. Although I've never had a grape, I've just seen them in photos. If there's any non-aeroid that I can convince you to try and find, please please get this one. I promise that it's going to bring you joy that you did not know existed. And even if you look at this plant and think, uh, it's not really a plant that like I like, you will like it, okay? Just get it. Second to last plant I'm going to show you is my Deschidia rusifolia. I got this one from Lauren. She gifted this one to me and was like, you seem like you need one of these. And she was right. It's been kind of a crazy one to grow. Um, you can see it's kind of overtaken this Architrellis now. But I did pot this knowing that I wanted some trailing, or I, <laughs> trailing, I wanted some climbing the trellis and I wanted some trailing. And it's kind of looking exactly how I want it to look. I do think that I probably could, you know, start supporting some more to go up here to make it a little fuller, but um, overall it's just been kind of a dream to grow. It's been a fast grower at that, a very forgiving plant, a plant that does not require a ton of light, um, doesn't require your, your soul to grow big and lush like this. Yeah, this is another Deschidia that I would highly recommend that you get if you are into these dainty little leaves like I am. We've been at this all day, friends. So this is the last one that I'm gonna show you. This is my Philodendron Dean McDowell. One of them, this larger one, is from Alice's Plant. And the smaller one is one that I picked up locally. Um, let me let you in on a little secret here. Uh, if you've had these Philodendron, <laughs> I'm done, she's done. If you've had these Philodendron Pastazanums, Pastazanums popping up around your nursery, 
more than likely they are a Dean McDowell because these were sold as pasta Zanems but it is very clearly a Dean McDowell. It looks just like all of the Dean McDowells that I've seen and had before. Looks just like Alice's Dean McDowell. And yeah, I'm just really happy because I snagged this for like, I think it was like three bucks or something or $5. So I'm really happy about that. And I am happy that I decided to pot them together because it just looks so cute as a bushy plant. And I'm kind of hoping that it continues this like, climbing pattern instead of like crawling because it's so much easier to grow these like leafy guys when they climb rather than crawl um and like i showed you earlier this one is just living in my kitchen because of the spider mite issue i don't know when it will be resolved i feel like the philodendron dean mcdowell is just a spider mite magnet and it's kind of like just part of the package when you get a Dean McDowell. Every Dean McDowell that I've had has had spider mites at some point and this one is no different but she's kind of cute, she's kind of slaying, she's kind of giving and yeah I love it very much and oh this is just in a no drainage vessel as usual with a pond or leka down at the bottom and then a very chunky party pond on top. I can't express to you Oh, how tired I am. I wish that I could like go get a massage right now because that was a lot. Um, filming these plant tours back to back to back has been extremely, extremely taxing, but I'm happy that I finally got it up. It's been a super, super highly requested video of me to get up. I just couldn't wrap my mind around actually doing it. So I hope that it lived up to everything you wanted and more. I am just so tired. I don't know if you guys, guys can tell, but my face is like falling. My eyes are drooping. My eyes are super heavy. So I am going to take a little nap and I may not wake up until tomorrow. And um, I do want to give you sort of a peek at the shelf a little bit more in depth might roll you a cute little montage if Sherman can can muster up the energy to do it. So um, yeah, I guess roll r roll the montage. Roll the montage, Sherman.
I know, I'm sleepy too. It's 10.38. We have to get out of bed. We have to get out of bed. <laughs> did you have good sleep last night? Cause I did. Do you like the new sheets? Cause I do. <laughs> Safe to say, um, these sheets are definitely pudge approved, husband approved, me approved and um, we love them. So as a reminder, Brooklinen is having one of their biggest sales of the year right now to celebrate their birthday now through May 8th. So if you wanna stock up on bedding to bath essentials, now is the perfect time to take advantage of their sale where you can get 25% off using the link in our description. Thank you Brooklinen again for these sheets. Thank you guys for watching the last part of this plant tour. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up because it helps us a lot on YouTube. And we will see you in the next one.